The city of Clareton, PA, sits tucked in a curve of the Monongahela River, about 12 or 13 miles south of Pittsburgh as the crow flies. Looking down from the overpass towards the banks of the Mon, the U.S. Steel Clareton Works pushes up smoke from its riverfront stacks, holding on to the title of the largest coke plant in the country. Clareton's relationship with the integrated steel mill and coke production facility reads similar to other Mon Valley cities muddling along well past their industrial prime, now left with dwindling populations, living in a shell of a city built for two, three, four times as many people. I've been working on a project for the Trib on a small cluster of these third-class cities, Clareton being one of them. It's the kind of place people warn me to be careful about when I go to photograph there. They've read the headlines. Crime rates much higher than the national average, about a quarter of the residents living in poverty. The mayor of the city took me to a whole block of abandoned homes, family photos scattered through broken glass and ripped curtains on the floor, spice cabinets still full of spices, the remains of drug addicts' plight scattered across the floors. But you couldn't do a full portrait of Clareton without noting the other headline grabber, the now legendary Clareton Bears, the Class A high school football team that adds to, maybe even defines, a tradition of fabled footballers sprouting from the calloused valleys of the Rust Belt. I've heard about the team from so many people since I moved to the area, I almost feel like I've seen the movie. Three square mile city down on its luck has winningest high school football team in the country, the classic American underdog story. When I showed up in Clareton last Friday to photograph a day with the team, they were carrying the longest active winning streak in American high school football. With 66 consecutive wins in a row, the Bears had not lost since September 4, 2009. I walked into the Clareton Education Center, where the elementary, middle, and high schools share a building, and into the cafeteria where the team eats a meal together on game days after the school day comes to a close. The mood was excited, with Queen's We Are the Champions playing on repeat. The team walked up Miller Avenue, past abandoned storefronts whose old signs hang like faded tattoos, reminder of an identity past, colors bleached by sun and time. Cars honked, an old woman watched the parade of athletes out her window. A man dropped his work in a garage and came out to do a little dance for the boys as they cheered him on. When the team reached the stadium and settled in a bit, Coach Tom Nola, a retired history teacher, calmly stood in the corner of the swirling, excited locker room and oversaw players inflating a series of air mattresses, laying them out on the locker room floor and finding a place among them to lounge before Nola switched the lights out. He hardly had to say a word, the players shushed each other for him, and he shut the door for about an hour of quiet time before the locker room began to squirrel again with excitement, rap music blasting, players taping up and suiting up and hyping up as the town outside the locker room started to gather near the stadium for their own pregame rituals. Mothers, aunts, and grandmas brought their children out to watch the Clareton High Marching Band and the Honey Bears parade down downtown Clareton and up Miller Ave to the stadium. Children ran alongside the band and dancers doing their own twirls over the uneven sidewalk. Tailgaters filled the parking lot across from where the line for tickets spilled out of the stadium. Who else has this? One tailgater asked me, beaming as he gestured with his solo cup across the parking lot and stadium like a king surveying his kingdom. So much of being a photographer is about anticipation, and sometimes you think you know what's going to come next. But as I followed the Bears back down into the locker room at halftime, I was witnessing a team behind by 14 points to their long-term rival, a team they had beat to begin their winning streak four years ago. I tried to catch the orange slivers of light reflecting off the sweat on the players' faces as they paused on the locker room steps to turn and face the crowd yelling at them from the ramp and stands above. I tried to move unnoticed around the locker room at halftime, realizing that I was witnessing a different history than I anticipated beginning to build in front of my eyes. At the end of the night, the Clareton Bears walked away from Neil C. Brown Stadium with the first loss on their home turf since 2005. As the last of the straggling fans wandered out, the players gathered in the end zone under the glow of the scoreboard. Home, 24. Guest, 42. A little girl yelled out from beyond the chain-link fence, We love you, Bears! When you look at these photos, it's easy to see a simple record of a football team losing a game. But for Clareton, it's a record of the power of mythology created when brothers, cousins, uncles, fathers, grandfathers even, pass on a tradition as saturated with local legend and importance as the bears. Like Mama says, this too shall pass, both the bad times and the good. This may be the end of a streak for Clareton, 
but in a town familiar with ends, they'll still carry on.